20 years' time, if the present retirement age isn't changed, it's estimated that almost one in three people in the UK will be a pensioner. It's not going to be more than two or three years before huge numbers of the baby boom generation suddenly start to retire. Our pension system is based around an expectation that we live until we're 70. Most of us are now going to live into our 80s and 90s. At current inflation levels, things are likely to cost a lot more in 2029. It's estimated that the price of a pint of milk could have almost doubled from 45 pence to 81 pence. And an average cinema ticket might cost nearly 15 pounds. You're unlikely to be working, at least you're hoping not to. So you'll be living on your pension. But key parts of our pension system are already beginning to creep. Some of the UK's major companies have already or are proposing to close final salary pension schemes even to existing members. Barclays and Dairycrest are proposing to close their final salary schemes. Morrisons already have done. Feelings are running high. Pensions for public sector workers may become unaffordable. Collectively, our local councils have a pension fund shortfall estimated at around £100 billion. Many private pensions, exposed to the ups and downs of the stock market, are losing their value. And to cap it all, our present basic state pension is regarded as the lowest in Western Europe relative to earnings. There are currently 7,400 private final salary schemes in the UK. In the last decade, nearly 3,000 of them have been closed to new members. And over 1,000 have been closed for existing members with the benefits frozen. Fujitsu is just one of the big names now considering following suit. Others include high street names and blue chip brands like Barclays, Dairy Crest and IBM. The companies have just found it too big a risk to take. They don't know how long people are going to live for. They don't know what investment returns are going to be. And every year the accountants will put the deficit of the pension fund onto the balance sheet. New research by a leading firm of actuaries shows that around one million workers could be affected by this trend over the next three years. That's more than one in three of all people who currently pay into this type of pension. Some commentators think the prospects for final salary pension schemes are not good. Anyone in a final salary pension scheme in the private sector needs to be aware that it is most likely that their final salary scheme will not last for that much longer. Final salary schemes are dying. Using published financial reports, Dispatches has been looking at what some of the people who oversee the pensions and financial services industry might get on retirement. The chairman of the pensions regulator, David Norgrove, currently has a pension pot of over £725,000, which could give him over £31,000 a year. And the former chief operating officer of the Financial Services Authority, David Kenmere, currently has a pot of over £750,000, which could give him over £45,000 a year. It's not just employees in the private sector who are worried about their pensions. It was always assumed that those in public sector jobs would have their final salary pensions guaranteed, wouldn't they? The problem with the public sector is, unlike the private sector, they're still living in cloud cuckoo land. Pensions expert John Rolfe estimated last year that one local authority fund had a shortfall of three billion pounds, and that another had a funding gap of 2.3 billion. According to John Rowell's figures, the total deficit of all the local authority pension schemes in the country could be as high as 100 billion pounds. Dispatches has calculated how much extra we'd have to pay if the predicted shortfall had to be made up entirely from our council taxes. It's an additional £150 per household per year for the next 20 years. Council workers' pensions are underwritten by invested funds, but the pensions of the armed forces, firemen, police and other public sector workers are paid for directly out of our taxes. The Office for National Statistics predicts that in 20 years' time, there will be 5 million more people aged over 65 in the UK than there are today, whilst there will only be 2 million more people of working age. So the funding gap for public sector pensions is likely to increase. Future taxpayers, our children, whoever they may be, are being saddled with these 
debts which are unchangeable. These pensions will have to be paid. But nobody's being honest with them about how much it's going to cost and nobody's putting money aside to help pay for them now. How are we going to fund it the same way that we fund everything, which is we pay taxes and we pay taxes? And, and of course, that's the thing that so worries chancellors of the Exchequer, that this becomes an unaffordable tax burden. None of the costs are included in the government's budget, in the chancellor's fiscal rules. It's all hidden off balance sheet, if you like. Dispatchers worked out what each household in the UK could have to pay if we had to meet this future shortfall through extra tax. It could mean an increase of £875 a year for the next 20 years. When we look back on it, we have to recognise that the forecasts that people were given for what their pension savings would, de would deliver were pretty much fantasy. They were not realistic. They were based on much too high expectations of stock market returns. And they haven't delivered. Anyone investing in a private pension, like Tom Farrer, could be vulnerable to the stock market and its fluctuations. When it comes to state pensions, it's the taxpayer that takes the risk. When it comes to final salary pension schemes, it's the shareholders who take the risk. When it comes to personal pensions, it's individuals who take the risk. They are least well placed to take that risk, particularly if their pension saving is their only saving.